You're listening to World of Empowerment Radio, your station for practical spirituality in a changing world. And here are your hosts, Angel Rose and Ahanu. Well, hello, everybody. Here we are, Ahanu and myself. In back in Bend, Oregon, back in the the cold of freezing cold, it's, snowy it's, Arctic. It's, it's actually not freezing here, but it feels like it since we've just spent the last two weeks in California, which of course is a very different climate. But anyway, on the way back, we were having this stimulating conversation, weren't we, Hano, about relationships and all kinds of relationships, relationships uh, with twin flames, relationships with soulmates. All, you know, all kinds of relationships. So it was so good. Our conversation was so good that, of course, as we do what we always do. We're sharing it with you. It is turning into a course that we're doing online called Unlocking the Keys to Soulmate and Twin Flame Relationships. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to share that with you, too. We will put the link up to that in due course when we have that ready, which will be soon. But it is interesting, deep, riveting information. Riveting. Oh, that's dangerous. Certainly it was riveting when we met, wasn't it? Huh? It was. It was dangerous too. It was trouble. <laughs> it was all those red flags that you get when something says, warning, warning, you're about to enter deep territory. Remember how? Yes. So if you're interested in what kind of a relationship you're in, if you're interested in what somebody means to you, and that could be student, teacher, parent, child, husband, wife, brother, sister. If you're interested in what those kinds of relationships are meaning or are doing in your life right now, have a listen. That's right. So stay tuned. Well, hello, everyone. We're so glad you joined us tonight. This is Ann Gail Rose, and I'm with my beloved twin flame, Ahanu. And we are really happy to be here with you tonight and talk to you about uh, our upcoming program on twin flame and soulmate relationships. But, you know, Ahana, first let's talk about relationships in general, because we know that we're in a relationship with everything. We're in a relationship with the world, with the cosmos, with the environment, with food, with each other. We actually need all those things to survive. We need each other to survive. And, you know, just you can talk about stories too, where, People have been alone for many, many, many years, and they're not as healthy, for example. They find that they need to be held or touched. So this is a problem with many, many people. There's a lot of lonely people in the world. And you and I, you know, we're very lucky to have found each other at a later stage in our lives. We didn't really meet until 10 or 11 years ago. You probably remember better than me. You have the exact date marked on your forehead, like a brand. Okay. I do. <laughs> okay. But but it wasn't always this way. So, you know, of course, when I was younger, teenager, um, I had lots of boyfriends. I wanted lots of boyfriends. And I got rejected quite a bit, too. And, and I don't know how you were when you were an adolescent and young. But that, that desire for relationships starts early on, as you know. All right. But when I look at when I first fell deeply in love with somebody, it was a strange situation because this was a, a young man who was in my high school for all four years. I never saw him, never even noticed him until my senior year when I was a senior in high school. I actually saw him at a school dance and I thought, you know, here was, let me paint this picture of you. Here was this guy who was a senior, totally different than the norm, cowboy hat on, short jacket that was made out of brown and white spotted cowhide, tight jeans with a Western belt buckle on and cowboy boots. And he was the only one who had the nerve to dance, to dress like that at that time period. And there he was dancing. And I remember he thought, he, oh my God, this young guy has the sexiest hips. So I went up to him Monday in school the Monday, the following Monday, and I just said to him, when are you asking me out? And of course, he never had even seen me either that whole four years. So lo and behold, he takes me to three dog night concert. 
And that night we knew we were going to get married. It was that fast. It was like, well, who is this person? Why didn't I ever see him? Okay. So it was a whirlwind relationship in the sense like it was fast. It was intense. It was uh, full of ups and downs and love, hate things. Make a long story short, we did get married. And as it turned out, he was murdered at work three months later, shot by a would-be robber, which ended that relationship abruptly, as you can imagine, and was filled with all sorts of trauma. But when I look back on that now, what it made me do was begin to investigate the whole subject of spirituality. I went to my very first psychic after that because it was never clear on what actually happened that night. The police didn't know. Nobody knew. And she became my very first teacher. I went to her home and she taught me. She let me come and ask questions, metaphysical questions about the other world, about angels, about what happens after you die. And that set me on my spiritual path. But if that event didn't happen to me back then, I never would have switched over to a spiritual path at 19 years old. So it turned out that it was a karmic thing. When I say karmic, I do mean something that was pre-planned that was meant to be. And it just took my life in a completely different direction. So how about you, Hannah? What about your young life with relationships? Well, I think it's fair to say that most people haven't to breeze what they're getting into when they're going through school and, and into young adulthood. They really don't know what to expect and it's all experimentation and it's all jovial and lackadaisical and having fun and sex and beer and wine and spirits and adventure. And especially if you're Irish, right? Huh? Well I think it's true of perhaps it's true of most nationalities, perhaps not some that are so sexually repressed or so religiously oppressed. But certainly that was my childhood and uh yeah, there was some rejection in it, but there was also a lot of rejecting. You know, you just, you picked and choose and you did what you, you wanted to do. And in some ways, I suppose that's uh, making a stick to beat yourself with in later times with karmic consequences, perhaps, I don't know. But to me, I never saw any problem with relationships or difficulty with relationships. It was something that people got into. It was a natural thing. It had no big spiritual consequences to it as far as I knew then. But little did I know about what was going on in the bigger picture and all of that was to unfold for me. And that's something that we would like to introduce you to is to what is going on in the bigger picture and why relationships are so important and why not to diminish them just the way I have done there with all my youthful relationships. I diminish them. But in fact, the truth is that I wouldn't be where I am now without them. I wouldn't know what I know now without them. They all were important in all kinds of different ways. They all helped me learn, helped me grow. And I suppose in in a reciprocal way, I helped those partners grow also in all kinds of different ways. So they're not to be diminished. But there's also relationships that are not healthy. And thankfully, I haven't been in very many of those because I've always enjoyed relationships that I've been in. But there are unhealthy relationships. And I, I've often been asked, why would that happen? Why would somebody choose a partner that beats them, for example, or represses them in some way or psychologically overcomes them or treats them like dirt or lowers their self-esteem? Why would somebody enter into that? And these are the kinds of questions that we want to bring to the fore. These are the kinds of questions we want to ask in your life. Have you been in a relationship like that? Does this ring a bell with you? What is really going on? And how come you haven't been able to understand it up until now? These are very, very important questions. But also, I'd like to offer a little gleam of hope because in the case of Angel Rose's story right there where her first husband was murdered three months into their marriage, she didn't perceive any possible good outcome from that or how she might ever be in another relationship again. But, you know, it's always in hindsight that you can look back and say, my God, I, you know, in some weird kind of way, I'm glad that happened because I learned so much. I couldn't see it then, but I do see it now. So 
this is something we want to deal with as well. It's also something that I think we want to discuss the benefits of having your heart broken, even though most people would never welcome that, you know, or think that there was ever a benefit to having deep rejection or having your partner die so young or, or, you know, like I say, deep, having your heart deeply broken, especially for me at such a young age when I had such high hopes for our future together and everything that we would do and children we would have and all of that. And to realize that you're alone, you know, we were in the process of building a home and his father finished it. So I did live in the home for a little while. But, you know, everything about the house reminded you of what wasn't going to be. So it took a long time. It takes a long time to move through grief. But, you know, like I say, if it didn't happen, it wouldn't have made me ask the questions, the deeper questions about relationships, you know, at that age. And so my next partner after that was, you know, I did remarry, of course, and I had a son with this other uh, next gentleman. And I picked him because my first husband was a very possessive man. He was a very jealous man. And so this second husband wasn't that way at all. He was very emotionally peaceful. He was actually my karate instructor at the time. He was a gentle man. He, he wasn't aggressive in any way like my first one. But that didn't last either because there was a lot of... Um, pot smoking involved and beer drinking and all of that. And uh, I wasn't into any of that. And so essentially I was still very young and I was bored. But when I look back at that relationship, I have a beautiful son by him. You know, I, I don't know that I think about what I learned or didn't learn from that one, just that I do appreciate that I had this uh, beautiful son. And perhaps we just were only meant to have this uh, my son. I'm not sure. Do you know, because he's definitely a spiritual boy. He's a young man now. He's actually uh, more than a young man. He's an adult, but he's a very, also has gone on a spiritual path and is a very spiritual person. And Rosa, I'm not sure that people know what's going on when it's happening. I know for me, I did not know what was going on. At the time. And equally, I did not know what a soulmate was. I hear it in a romantic sense in the movies and all of that, but did not know what it really meant. And it's something that we want to explore into and help clarify, because there's a lot of misunderstandings about what a soulmate is. And even if you or I or our listeners were to ask that question now, am I in a soulmate relationship or am I in a twin flame relationship? And what does it even matter? I think the answers would be very revealing. So we'd like to raise those kinds of questions and we'd like to help arrive at the bigger, the solution to difficult relationships. The other thing that I believe is very important is that a lot of times relationships we have found have to do with a kind of a frequency in a sense that if you're operating at a, at a low frequency, it's like the birds of a feather fly together type of a, of a syndrome or like attracts like if you're operating in a murderous, cruel, vindictive type of a vibration, I think it's fair to say that that's the kind of relationships you're going to attract. And equally though, if your heart is loving and is outstretched and you're, you're reaching out and being the best that you can be, I think it's fair to say that it's very likely that that's the kind of relationship that you will attract also. But what I find very interesting about this is that therein comes in the whole question of destiny. Like, are you destined to be vindictive and cruel and hateful and spiteful and murderous? Or are you destined to be loving and caring and joyful? And I think that we're destined to be loving and joyful, but that there are these low frequencies that take us down. And it can be the case that you are in a relationship with a low frequency individual who does not want to take these steps to be more loving and more joyful in the world. 
And they're the very issues that we want to address and point out in our workshop that we want to tell you about. Because by identifying them, you then arrive at a place of sovereignty inside yourself. You arrive at a place where you're able to say no to these relationships. And I know that Angel Rose has many stories about where she, it, she was brought to the point of having to say no to relationships because of that, because the lesson was saying no. It wasn't to endure and continue to put up with punishment and difficulty and strife and sadness and abuse. So there's well, a lot you, to learn in all of this. Well, you make a good point in the sense where you, and I want to go back to how you talked about like attracts like, because it can be the case where one person is soft and gentle and doesn't like conflict and doesn't like arguments. They could definitely attract somebody who is confrontational, who is uh, mean or aggressive. And you might look at that and say, well, because I did that from, uh, let me use myself. Uh, my father was not abusive to my mother in any way. Yeah, they had their arguments and things, but it was normal things people would argue about sometimes. But he wasn't jealous or possessive, and neither was my mother. And yet I attracted somebody who was extremely jealous and possessive. And that's the man I married because I did have boyfriends before that that were not that way. So you'd, I have to, had to ask myself more than one time, what attracted me to this particular person who, as it turned out, ended up being, in a way, abusive in that way to me. And I wouldn't say that I was that way. I was not that jealous. I was not possessive or domineering like that. But I think sometimes you attract people like that to learn a lesson on a soul level. Like you said, the lesson is to say no to things like that, or the lesson is to stand up for yourself. It doesn't matter if you're a female or a male because men get abused as well by women. You know, men get dominated by women as well. So it isn't always that each person is vindictive or mean, but it can be that there are lessons to learn that are refinements of a character. So how do you tell? How do you tell when you stay in relationships like that or when you leave? And that's one of the things that we're going to cover in depth. Mm -hmm. Ahana, because it's, it's a very a, important one. It is because it's yes. very important to know. Yes, it is. And it's interesting also because divorce is very common in our world. And a lot of times I think that people actually reach for this solution of divorce prematurely. I think, now, don't get me wrong, this is a sweeping statement, so I don't want it to sound like, but what I, what I mean is that they may not have tried to be the most loving that they can be inside themselves. Only then. If you've done, if you've been the most loving that you can be and still find yourself in that situation, then I say, yes, obviously the answer is no, uh, you know, walk away, dissolve the marriage because or the relationship or whatever it might be. But a lot of times I think we seek easy solutions. The grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. We don't want to work on ourselves and always the other person is to blame. And we do not want to look at the, what was it Jesus said about taking the timber out of your own eye the splinter or something like that yeah taking and uh, not i hope no bible people are listening <laughs> yeah but anyway i think people get yeah. the picture what, what i want to come to here is that when you know that you are a loving being when you know deep inside yourself that you're in your power as a sovereign being then you can be the best you can be in any circumstance and if that circumstance is trying or is it if that circumstance is abusive then you can be completely clear in your own heart and in your own head about what the right solution is so by us offering this this little course on the relationships on twin flames and soulmate relationships i would hope that people would find that the outcome is that they're able to discern they would be more discerning about the relationships that they're in. And I'm not only talking either about love relationships. We could be talking about, and we will cover in great detail too, parent-child relationships, student-teacher relationships, brother-sister relationships. We'll talk about all relationships 
of all kinds because they're all very important and they all matter and they all can bring their own, their own karma and their own sense of destiny with them. So we want to look at that in great detail too. And I think very few people don't really think about the fact that most of the people they meet in their lives, they've known before in other lifetimes. So we're going to spend time talking about past life relationships because they do bleed into people's current lives. You could be born in this time period and some of the people that you'll meet, you've agreed to meet because they're unfinished business from other lives, whether they're a relationship that's got interrupted or they're two enemies that still need forgiveness or reconciliation, or they're just continuations of a love affair that wants to continue. To understand who somebody is to you, you know, from a past life perspective, brings a whole new depth and wholeness to who you are and what your purpose is here and what you're doing with particular relationships. So just as you talked about discernment before, that's part of the discernment is coming to a place where you can be viewing a relationship from many different perspectives. In other words, is it healthy or unhealthy? Is it meant to be romantic or friendship? Is it something that I should stay in or should I leave? And, you know, case in point, I'll tell you a little story that I had someone come to me for a reading who, you know, had been best. It was a woman who had been a best friend with this other woman for many, many years, 20 or 30 years. And they were growing apart. And she just, for the life of her, was beside herself to think that this friendship that had been there for so long, they were veering off in different directions. And so even in that situation, there was a lot of grief. And so she had come to me for clarity on who is this person to me and is this relationship meant to go in different directions or was she supposed to do something to reconcile it? Makes the point that relationships are... You know, they all involve some sort of emotion and and there isn't one that whether you have it or whether it comes into your life or leaves your life doesn't impact you in some way. But what we found in putting our course together was not just about being able to define soulmates and how to identify soulmates and how to tell if you're with a soulmate or a twin, all that that involves because each type of relationship has its own richness, its own value. And yet, you know, the other thing we've discovered is at the end of the day, you look back, like you mentioned before, Ahano, in hindsight, that hindsight will make you look at all of those relationships from a very different perspective in the sense that you can see that there is a destiny to your life. And by that, I do mean that you had a hand in setting it all up, whether a relationship continued or didn't continue, you had a hand in that. You had your hand in it before you were even born. You set up a particular evolution to yourself. And, you know, I know, Ahano, just um, recently you did a few podcasts on being the director of your life or looking at ourselves as creators of our lives. And the one thing that we really hope people will get out of this course that we're going to do is they will see an order to their life, a destiny to their life, a purpose to their life, and it will be a good one. Not something negative, not something fatalistic, not something from a victim perspective or how they've been victimized their whole life. No, they're going to look at it like it had a purpose and that purpose was leading them to a higher place. Yes. That's a beautiful thought when you consider that All the time we are creating our futures, really. And some of these concepts may be difficult for people to understand in the broadest sense as we're speaking now casually about this. But as we get into the course, this will all become clear and and you will realize that you can make a decision for love, for example, that you can be very, very clearly on a path of self-awareness and self-mastery and that you are raising your standards. One of the things that we had great fun with some time ago, Angel Rose, you might remember, was the whole subject of mediocrity. And I remember back when I was a child and a lot of parents, I would overhear that they're staying together for the sake of the children. 
Now, there can be a, that can be quite justified. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that or, or anything right with it. But the fact to me, though, the young mind at the time was thinking, well, what a mediocre thing to do to put up with a situation that you're not happy with, that's not going right, that perhaps is abusive and all of that for the sake of somebody else. And that the right thing might be to to not accept something that's mediocre anymore and to accept something better for yourself and something bigger for yourself. And this is what we want to introduce when we talk about twin flames and soulmate relationships. We want to introduce the possibility that for all of us, and this can be with an existing relationship, I'm not talking about you having to go out and change any, any relationship, but that you can step up your game so that you're not in a mediocre relationship anymore. You're in something that is joyful, that is meaningful, that you can feel the love that's in it. And you know that it, it, is, it is performing some kind of planetary mission or, or that it, it is actually developing for you some kind of self-mastery or it's fulfilling your destiny. Right. So these are, these are big things that we want to bring out that, and they're very, very important. And the other thing too is that a lot of times when we talk about these kinds of subjects, Angel Rose, you'll know that we get people writing into us on our podcasts or on our websites where they'll say, you know, you're talking, but how do you do it? How do you do this? This is where we sat down and we spent many, many weeks really, really trashing out what had to be in this course and what was not to be in this course so that you would find the how. It would be easy to know the how. The how, we will spell that out for you and you will know how and why that's important is because the universe is listening. This is one beautiful concept that we want to cover too. The universe is listening. So if you express that desire to step out of mediocre relationships and to step into a higher calling and to recognize love at its deepest level and recognize your capacity for loving at a deep level, the universe is listening and it will respond in all kinds of beautiful ways. We found that so many times with ourselves. And you might remember, Angel Rose, when I wrote a book called The Reincarnation of Columbus. And you, in fact, mentioned it also in the two of books that you've written, The Time of Change and The Nature of Reality, where we talk about synchronicities and coincidences. And a lot of times people find that they, their relationship began with a synchronicity or it began with a coincidence. And you look back and you say, or it was set up a Hanno like well, you and me. The, this is the point where, <laughs> where you feel as if this was set up. Mm -hmm. But the reason it was set up was because your frequency was now matching the higher frequency of the other. You were lining up for a higher purpose, a bigger, a bigger destiny. And that's well, a beautiful thing. And we will talk about how when those opportunities present themselves for a higher relationship, it usually is. I know, for example, I'll go back when I was married to one of my husbands, and um, that was a another situation that was abusive in a different way. And a soulmate came into my life at that time, and it was the first connection I ever had with anybody where there was instant mental telepathy between us. And, of course, it made me immediately look at what I was, who I was living with, what I was accepting for myself and for my children. But at the same time, it wasn't meant to be a romantic relationship. And I had thought it was, I thought, well, if you had that kind of a soulmate connection with somebody, of course you're meant to be with that person uh, romantically. And as it turned out, uh, no, our personalities were definitely not online with each other. However, the purpose of that relationship was to give me a comparison between what it would be like if you had somebody who saw you at a very deep level and knew who you were and understood you and saw the good in you, as opposed to living with someone who was always perceiving negative in you. And I think those soulmates come into our lives at different times for different reasons. And some of them are just to be catalysts to jar you out of a, a mediocre, as you put it, situation that you're living in. But that was a hard one for me because I had wanted to pursue it on a romantic level. And that was a, a lesson I had to learn also. So in this course, too, we will 
we'll get into the nitty gritty of these these different attractions Mm -hmm. and these purposes on who's in your life and why and Mm -hmm. who comes in when. And sometimes these types of soulmates pop into your relationships and cause all sorts of havoc, but yet they're meant to, you know, stir the pot, if you will. Yes. Okay. To cause change. In a way, when we look at the microcosm and the macrocosm in U S politics right now, there is a, a leader causing all kinds of division and separation. And in lots of ways, it's raising those very issues inside families, inside people. Yeah. And that's not necessarily a negative thing because they need to be looked at. So it's a good thing that they would come up. Whatever causes an issue to come to the surface ultimately is good because you you obviously need to look at it and you need to address it. And there's also times, too, when people play the role of your enemy. Yes. They're soulmates that play the role of your enemy. Yes. Okay. And they do that, again, for a particular reason, something not reconciled from another life or something to mm-hmm. cause, you know, an upward growth in yourself. Yes through whatever happens, they don't always turn out great. You know, sometimes we're presented with these relationships for personal growth and both parties fail at it. You know, they don't achieve the desired result. But anyway, we'll, we'll be able to go through that. And once again, hopefully the person who's ever listening, who's ever participating will really joyfully understand how good it is that they are where they are right now, whether it's with somebody, not with somebody, whether they've had existing patterns that they Mm -hmm. view as continually Mm -hmm. negative, they're going to look at it in a different way. And there's, there is resurrection at the end. There is, there is, we're going to show at the end how you can, once you uncover some of the, some of the things about yourself that you weren't aware of, you'll see how you can create and bring in the type of love that you want Mm -hmm. into your life. And you, you're not, you know, I don't, I personally don't believe anybody has a destiny to be lonely or to no. live them, live their lives at lonely as a person. I don't well, believe that myself. I'm glad you raised that, Angel Rose, because it's one of the things that we want to address just briefly now before we bring things to a close, but also that we will be dealing with in great detail in the course is that whole issue of being on your own and loneliness and also why that plays a part. And we talk about, you know, the possibility that perhaps your twin flame is not even on the planet and there could be various other reasons, but we'll go into that in greater detail. But one of the things that I want to bring up now is the whole issue of men, because I think it's fair to say, and I think most people will agree that women by their very nature tend to be more loving, more motherly, more caring, more loving, and that the man is more aggressive and less loving, perhaps. Now, here's the thing. I found through adversity that that's not the case. I found through the death of my own son, a a depth of love that I never knew existed in me. And I realized also that this was posing a huge problem for men in general, that men were brought up not to cry, not to feel. And what we'll be touching on as we go through the depth of love that we're going to be talking about when we go into the twin flame relationships especially, is how that depth of love is actually in men also. But society tends to keep it down. And perhaps the whole masochistic ego approach to mankind in general tends to keep that push down. And we will be looking at that and we will be bringing that out. And it's a beautiful thing for us to address. And many men have already expressed huge gratitude to us for even addressing it. And many women also. The final thing that I want to mention before we bring to a close, though, is that all of this, while it might seem complex and while it might seem difficult when you talk about past lives and future lives and loneliness and you're asking yourself, am I with the right person? Am I with the wrong person? Is it the right time in my life? Is it the wrong time in my life? You know, what about the fact that I'm in a previous relationship or or that my previous relationship is is, is still strong or, or whatever? And then... When you look at the like attracts like thing, we talked about the frequency. We, when we talk about that, and then you begin to see the cosmic order and the, the divine order, and you mentioned the word destiny, for example, then you start looking and realizing that there is a why of it all. There is a, there is a you in your power. 
<laughs> there is a you that is is beautifully powerful inside of all of that. And how you can then recognize that and use that to get rid of the mediocrity and achieve what you desire. And we will be talking about all of that. And you you will remember that I did say that the universe is listening and how you can recognize and know that the universe is listening. And then we've all, I think most people have seen um, perhaps the, that movie about the law of attraction, but you'll see how that the plays secret. it. Or the secret, yeah, how that plays its part with your own, raising your own frequency and vibration. And we'll show you also how to do that and and uh, creating the life you desire. So we do want to go to a few questions and answers now, because that's what we did promise Angel Rose. So the first question that has come up is, how do you tell the difference between a twin flame and a soulmate? Now, I know we're going into this in great detail, but just briefly, how can you tell that one is a soulmate and the other is a twin flame? Briefly. Well, very briefly, you know, soulmate is is anybody that you have met in another lifetime that you've had a relationship with us in some capacity, whether it's a mother, father, you know, teacher, student, lover, friend, somebody you worked on projects with. Basically, a soulmate is anybody you're connected to from a past lifetime in some way, or you could have lived many lifetimes with that person. A twin flame, on the other hand, is your divine counterpart. That's the, you literally are each other. You're the same flame. You're, there's no separation. You're not two separate people. You're one spirit. That has its own implications and its own qualities and, you know, lessons to it, attached to it as well. But we'll get into all that, Ahana. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, but that's one thing that we will cover. Okay. Another question that has come in, Angel Rose, is, about a transgender people and this person wants to know can they achieve the same sense of love that we've just been speaking about here well of course they can i don't see why anybody couldn't achieve the same sense of love but there is a big degree in what we're talking about for all people in terms of there is some know yourself type of work involved and and we're going to get into that too in terms of getting greater connected to your own inner self, to who you are, understanding yourself at deeper levels and taking a look at, at the relationship with you, your relationship with the four elements, for example, as well. How do those play out and within you, earth, air, fire, and water and spirit, because you, you're composed of all of those. So when you talk about transgender people or everyone has the same inner self, you know, I mean, not same in the sense that, they're the same person, but we all have an inner self. We all have access to an inner self. Mm. And all of that goes beyond sexuality and it goes beyond gender. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Another question that has come in is about abuse. And this person wants to know that if the abuse has been so severe in her life that she finds it difficult to trust men or trust any relationship now, do you think that our program will help her in any way? Well, it will in the sense of it will show her. You know, I hate to use the word lessons because you and I have had many discussions about lessons uh, in and of themselves. But it is all about self-mastery in some way. So anybody's situation has the potential to bring them to a greater sense of self-mastery. and. What she'll find out of it is she'll understand what she has to do to move herself towards greater self-mastery. Right. Our last question today, Angel Rose, is about the great movie tragedies that most people are familiar with now, like Romeo and Juliet and Tristan and Isolde. And in the Irish tradition, we have Dermot and Grania. And what this person wants to know is those relationships, are they like the twin flame? relationships that we will be speaking about in this course. They definitely are. And another one I just thought of is Jesus and Mary Magdalene. It's another twin flame relationship. So these are very different than soulmate relationships. And we will go into great depth about the implications of a twin flame meeting and what they're all about. And also how to be in those types of relationships without them ending in tragedy. Yes, that was the point I think this person was 
uh, alluding to was the fact that if I go into a twin flame relationship, will it be tragedy like these great movies portray? Well, they don't have to be. Although, you know, I have read articles by people who talk about twin flames saying how there are inevitably that they won't last. And, you know, you and I are testimony that that's not true. And I don't agree with that, obviously, because I think if you understand the twin flame relationship and what it's asking for and where it's leading, the, the type of love that it's taking a person to and the work that needs to be done to maintain that, let's just say. And if both parties are doing that and recognize that that's what this is, then certainly they're a communion. They're not a tragedy. Right. Yeah. And it can be the case that it's the likes of Hollywood that would take those relationships and exacerbate the tragic side of it just to make a a movie, make it something compelling. A point. Well, I think even, you know, interestingly, though, in that movie that we watched about Tristan and Isolde, I think what separated that couple is Tristan chose to do a higher duty. If you remember, he was in the battle. He was uh, had a position of royalty and he let his he chose his duty over leaving with his twin flame to be happy with her. So we will get into higher callings because twin flame relationships are definitely bigger than the couple. Right. And they can have planetary impact and they, they can, can fulfill a big soul contract. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So that, that's a beautiful possibility. Okay. That brings us to the end of this introduction right now. But we want to introduce you to what will be the next step. And the next step Bear in mind that today we've just touched the tip of the iceberg, really. We just spent a little bit of time going into a surface level exploration of the power of soulmates and twin flame relationships. But we do want to get into deep exploration into all of this. And remember that this will be practical and experiential, and it will include downloads and meditations. And indeed, I want to just offer you now an unannounced gift. For anybody who stayed to the end and listened here, we will uh, give you the gift of our meditation to Paradise Earth. And that download link will be available in the text below. And it's a beautiful meditation. It will introduce you actually to enormous new possibilities of being in Paradise Earth and getting a feeling of what that feels like to be in a paradise environment, because that's what is, is coming up for people who are entering into twin flame relationships. So do download that. It's our gift to you and enjoy. Now, the thing is, we will be launching very soon this program on soulmates and twin flames, the key to unlocking the power of twin flame and soulmate relationships. So do watch out for that. That's right. It'll be juicy, Ahano, very juicy. It will. So with that, thank you from myself. Ahanu and from Angel Rose. Until next time, bye bye. You have been listening to Angel Rose and Ahanu on World of Empowerment Radio, your station for practical spirituality in a changing world.